I had this great conversation with Renee Nugent. She's the superintendent in uh, Atchison, Kansas. And I was blessed to be able to speak to her community for opening day this year. And they're just a, a warm group, very welcoming, but also very visionary, really trying to push um, the possibilities of what they could do in education. And as I was talking to Renee, one of the things that stuck out to me that as a superintendent, one of the things she shared was how she set aside time every week to ensure that she was in classrooms. And she had actually written how many time she had been she had been in the classrooms and had a goal for the year and the importance of that is to basically be in classrooms so much as a superintendent that people don't notice you because there is a difference when a superintendent walks in the classroom and people change their behavior and act a different way because it's so rare to actually see versus when you just keep doing what you're doing because you're so used to whether it's your principal or your superintendent. And one of the reasons she shared that she did that was to make sure that people were very familiar and comfortable, but she could really serve them and help them out. And I've been saying this forever that you should never make decisions for classrooms if you're not actually in classrooms. And Renee really embodied that. I thought it was such a great example. And uh, there's a lot of connections that she shared to her learning, to running. I'm training for a race right now. I thought that was really, really powerful and how she basically looks at just not doing one thing, but all the systems that you need to go into being successful. That's part of running. It's part of what we do in schools every day. You're going to find a lot of really great insights um, from leadership, from teaching and learning from Renee and from the people in her district and, and how she shares and how she connects. This is a really great podcast. I loved connecting with her. I know you're going to love it too. Welcome. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. Hey everyone, this is George Kroos. Welcome back to another episode of the Innovators Mindset Podcast. I am so blessed to have Renee Nugent. She is the superintendent of Atchison Public Schools, where I was so blessed to work with your staff, uh, work with the community, and they were they were awesome. We, I remember, I'm going to tell you this, we had like a little technical uh, thing that I had to deal <laughs> with there because I couldn't run the volume from my computer. And I don't know who the person was, but they sat behind Donna. Me. It was Donna who sat behind the stage the entire time and she made my life so much easier. So I got to, you know, yep. I got to give Donna a little shout out because that's yeah. what makes me nervous. So she really helped me out that day. And, uh, and, and you can see that was in the culture. It wasn't just Donna. Yes. It was everyone there too. So, um, you know, I spoke at a lot of places and <laughs> over the summer, and I remember that very particularly. So that yeah. really meant a lot to me. Um, you know, to come into a place and, you know, have someone support you. And I felt so bad for sitting behind there. It's like kind of <laughs> behind the curtain, but, um, Renee's actually, you know, done so many different positions, you know, uh, principal teacher, and now superintendent for the last five years in Atchison public schools. And so I, I feel uh chief fan. we got to mention that runner. Always. Are you, hey, are you, you're a big golfer too? I see that on your Twitter. Are you a big golfer? Yeah, I love to golf. Um, I golf as much as I possibly can. In fact, I've got my last ladies league golf is tonight. Well, listen, <laughs> I'm telling you, if you want to golf, I, I live in golf heaven. So I would love that. He's come to love Tampa it. Bay. You right. Come down, come golf. We'll go for a run, go to the game. There Perfect. You. All right, I'm so, all in. And all right. Yes. So Renee, if you can kind of just introduce yourself, tell us who you are, what you do, and how you got there, that's a great place to start. Yeah, yeah, sure. I'm uh, Renee Nugent, superintendent of schools in Atchison Public Schools, way in the northeast corner of beautiful Atchison, Kansas. We sit right on the Missouri River. This is my fifth year here. I spent 16 years on the complete opposite side of the state, Garden City, Kansas. Uh, I served as a school counselor, a school principal, a director of curriculum for secondary and an assistant superintendent out there. I've also been blessed to work in a couple other states in Texas um, for nine years in the Panhandle, Dumas, Texas. I taught English and then uh, was a school, uh, diag an educational diagnostician, did the testing and placement for a lot of special ed students, and then started my career actually in Northeast Nebraska at a little, great little town, South Sioux City, Nebraska Community Schools. And I taught middle school English and started uh, a middle school newspaper there. So I've just kind of been around the 
a few states and and a lot of experiences, but I believe every experience totally shaped who I am now as a superintendent. I mean, I I utilize, I go back into, sometimes I have to go back into counseling mode to truly right. listen, to understand. And I have to go into principal mode sometimes just to um to, to remind people it's the behavior I'm not liking, but you as a person, you're just great. And we just have to work on the behaviors. And then in the superintendent role, it's just leading from that 200,000 foot view that I, I really like. So well, how, how do you like, and I know this is something that you're really good at. How do you focus on? Cause I think a lot of times people see the superintendency as more of a political position than anything. And I know there is a facet of that, right? And mm -hmm. politics is really anything that you deal that's in the public, right? In the public sphere, yeah. where there's conversation about that too. But one of the things that I was really impressed with when I connected with you was your, your focus on teaching and learning and really being in on the conversations. And so how do you, cause I don't want to like say anything bad about anybody, but no. I'm, yeah. and, I, and I add a butt in there. So that means I'm about to. So, <laughs> so, and it's not about anyone in particular, but sometimes I feel in the superintendency position, we can lose focus on the teaching and learning. And so we're, right. we're, we're saying stuff, but it doesn't, we don't really understand what goes on in the classrooms every single day. So how have you like found that balance? Because I, 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 I noticed you did that very, very well to really kind of understand and empathize and be able to work with your teachers. And when I say empathize, it doesn't actually mean that, you know, every facet of their job in the moment to the day, but you still put them in a position where they can be successful. So how, how do you find that balance? Yeah. So, um, and, and even beyond teachers and teaching and learning, I, I still think it, the number one priority is the student. So no matter what role I'm in, I don't want to be disconnected from kids. Right. So every every week I make it a priority to get in classroom. So, so far this year, I'm at 182 classroom visits. I've got a, a, a chart on my board here in my office and I, I make little notations, what, what buildings, what classrooms I go into. And my goal this year is 800 classroom visits. I want to get into classrooms because I don't feel like I can make any decision that's good for kids if I don't know how kids are learning in the classrooms. So I, I go in it's, and I stay in my lane. I don't do walkthroughs. I, that's, that's not my lane. I just want to walk in and see what's happening. You know, I'm not a curriculum director anymore. I'm not a principal. That, that's not what I'm in the room. I'm just in the room to get the vibe, to see if the level of rigor is where I truly believe it needs to be for all kids. And then and then I and also that opens the door for me to have conversations with teachers, not about teaching at right. all. It's how you doing today? Um, I oh, my gosh, I just I love what I just saw. Um, you know, it is nothing that I'm going to, you know, write up an evaluation. It's just not what I do. But then at the end of the week, I put out what's called a superintendent shout out. And I share every good teaching and learning opportunity that I saw for the week. Mm -hmm. And that way someone at our high school can see what's going on. They've got a lens to what's happening in kindergarten. So there's no more of that. Well, they never learned that there, or they, you know, yes, right. kids are learning all across the district and I'm going to stay connected with that. That's my, I just have made that my priority. And then I, I also don't ignore what's happening politically as a superintendent. I can't. So if reading is, is what's on the mind of every Kansas legislature, then I need to make sure as, as a superintendent that my curriculum folks have what they need to ensure that we're on track with what the state wants for right. those initiatives. So um, it, it is, it's truly finding a balance, but also prioritizing. I mean, I just, I set myself up for, I try to do an hour a day in a building. That's my goal. You know, so like you, we were talking about running before and how you and I both track like what we're going to do every day. I'm like, Oh, you got that from running. You're like, uh, running. for sure. Totally. Yeah. Totally. That's cause that's like how I train. Like I just, I make yes. sure I write everything down. And so I just, that's the first time I'm like, Oh, she got that from running. So <laughs> oh, for that's sure. Just, that's awesome. The, uh, um, the, one of the things I've been saying forever is, and I, so this is what I appreciate about you. Cause I knew, I didn't, I didn't know your answer, but I knew it. Do you know what I mean? I knew yeah. that's what you'd say is that don't make decisions for classroom. If you make decisions for classrooms, you have to be in the classrooms. Right. And that is something really, really important to me. And one of the conversations I've had with people over the years 
they'll, you know, you'll see someone who has really great leadership skills and would be in a fantastic administrator, whether it's a principal, superintendent, whatever. And I'll say like, Hey, have you thought about this direction? And one of the things they say, and I hear it all the time is why well, I, I like, I don't want to do that stuff. Like I really like being around kids. I'm like, you can be around kids. Like that's yeah. where are you getting the idea that you can't be around kids? Because right. a lot of times they see kind of what I was talking about. It's all about the politics. It's not about actually being in the classrooms. And there's a joke I make, and I'm sure you'll, you'll understand it, but it doesn't seem like you do it about the superintendent entourage where we bring in the board members and we all like crouch down and all that stuff. And <laughs> people, you know, it's, it's feels very fake. And people act a certain way because they think like I'm, I'm on watch, you know, for these few minutes that everyone's pretending that they really know what's going on in the classrooms. And I can really tell a lot about a, a superintendent, a principal is when they walk into the classroom, does anything, do people change their attitude? Right. And if you're, and if you're in it all the time, I guarantee you when you start, like when you started doing that, people are probably like terrified, yes. right? But yes. then now it's just like, oh yeah. Renee's yeah. It's second nature. It's, it's not a big deal at all. You know, sometimes new teachers get a little uptight and I, and I share with them before I ever walk in the room, I'm going to be in and out of your room. It is no, please do not let it be a big deal. And then other teachers will chime in like, yeah, she was in my room all the time. It's, it's no big deal. And because it isn't, I'm not there to criticize. I'm there to look for what's good. And there's so much good happening here. And that's, that's what I love. I mean, I love sharing what's good. Yeah. And that, so, and that, that's what I used to say to my staff too, when I was central office, when I was principal, I'm not here to evaluate you. I'm actually here to evaluate the environment we put you in so I can make sure yes. that I can support you as best as possible. Yep. And it was like, cause that, that is the mentality is that you're writing notes about what's going on in the classroom yeah. as opposed to like seeing little things. I, I, I love that. So I actually, I'm really curious about this. Maybe this is a very personal question, um, you know, for something that I'm going through right now. So like you and I were talking, I'm you, you're training for a race. I'm training for a race. Yep. Uh, I feel, I used to hate running as a kid. I can't like, sometimes when I run, I'm like, okay. I can't believe I do this and how much we used to do. I don't know if this is a Canadian thing. We used to have to do a 12 minute run. And it, it was like, it, it like I dreaded that day. I did not yep. want to do that 12 minute run. And now like I couldn't run for only 12 minutes, like, yeah. which is weird to me. How do you like that process of running? And it, cause a lot of times people, like when you do a race that I always say this, the race is not the hard part It's the training for the race. That's hard. Yes. Right? So like it's the training for the race in the last three miles of the race. Right, right. <laughs> Everything else is good. Right. Yeah. So like, so like, what have you, what have you picked up? Like, like how have you, and I, you know, like I obviously when I heard about how you said you write all this stuff down, yeah. I'm like going through that process right now as I'm training, um, for this race, what are some of the things that you've learned from training, from running that you've applied as an educator? Yep. So I've learned that everything, every facet about training is important. The planning, yeah. the nutrition, the strength training, all of it applies to running. So there's, so it's, it's a system running. Isn't just a single thing it, really to not, not be miserable, not have stomach aches, not have, you know, all of that takes a lot to plan for. And I think that is the same for education. We can't just go in and wing it. We have to really look at every facet that affects it. We have to look at, you know, the, the, the level of rigor, um, the fun, the relevance, um, we have to take into account social, emotional stuff, even though that's kind of a hot, yucky topic, but, but it, it all matters in our ability to learn. You know, if I, I have a much better run first thing at 445 in the morning huh. when my head is not full of work than the afternoon. So I look at that as our learners, you know, I want, I would imagine that a lot of good learning happens between eight and noon yeah. when kids' heads aren't full of gunk. And then by the afternoon, they're done. That's how I am as an yeah. adult. And so I just think if we apply some of those same mindsets of, you know, it really takes effective planning to be good at anything. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I think so many times we get overwhelmed that we forget the, the, but one of my favorite books ever was practice per perfect. And I don't remember who wrote it, but it was really just about the art of 
you know, some of your best athletes never quit shooting free throws. They right. never quit, uh, you know, fielding ground balls and doing all the things that they should be able to do after 30 years, but you still have to go back and work on those skills. Um, so, so even when you want to do something new, I think you have to be solid at the foundations first. You know, so. I'm sure, you know, like I know you're a sports person, Steph Curry, right? Like obviously you no know Steph Curry. So like right. he actually, one of the things I love thinking about practice perfect. So he ends his training sessions by shooting. He has to make five free throws in a row, right. but they can't touch anything but mesh. So if he makes five in a row, but one of them hit the wow. rim starts at zero. So like, yeah, that's, that's a very, that's like, if you play basketball, that's not an easy thing to do. Right. To, right. Like, yeah, I can, hit, I can hit five free throws in a row to hit five free throws. I've tried right. it several times. Like, ah, like I hit the, you know, I hit a little, got a little yeah. rim on that one. And yeah, that's like a, that's a really uh, fascinating thing. I, I gotta tell you this running story. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, so he has set like these, he knows he can do it at this level, but he set this next level for himself. And I think that's what we have to take into education. Like, do we want to be status quo at what we do, or do we want to set next level goals and expectations for ourselves as leaders? And I think that's what I bring to the table a little bit from running and golf and, you know, right. everything I do. You know, so I, so I ran, um, my first marathon. So I actually, <laughs> this is kind of funny. I ran my first marathon when I was 29. I ran another one when I was 30. And so my goal is like, I'm going to run a marathon in every decade of my life. So I haven't run one since I'm 30, I'm 48. So I'm like cutting it close. <laughs> right? um, but my very first one, I was 29. I, when I, I didn't really, I just signed up for a marathon and I like never did a 5k, 10k half. Cause I actually didn't know enough about running. I just figured there was only marathons, right? <laughs> so I signed up for this marathon and what I do, I just ran all the time. I didn't do any of that other stuff. And I was pretty pumped. I remember I was like, when he, and I, I thought about this when you said, you know, those last three miles, right? We use kilometers. So I'm like, yeah. I'm like, where I'm two kilometers from being done. And I remember I was so like proud. I was like, oh my God, like I'm in such good shape. I can't believe I'm doing this. Like I'm going to finish because I knew I was going to finish. Right. Yeah. And I, I'll never forget. So I'm 29 years old. There is a, um, a woman probably in her seventies, who's maybe like five feet tall. She looked like my mom, to be honest with you, who just <laughs> passed me on this race. And I couldn't do anything like, and I was like, oh, okay, that was like, that was God humbling me right now. Like, hey, slow <laughs> yes. down, slow down. Right. Yes. Now. I'll never forget that. Yes. So, yeah. That, you know, and I, I, I always look back at that and it was like such a good moment for me. It was like, yeah, yes. slow down. You, you got yeah. you work to do. So um, that, that is, that is really powerful. So, um, when, when you were, uh, uh, when you went from the role of what you did before superintendent, were you, you were assistant superintendent, but like when you went from like principal to mm -hmm. central office, what was one of the big transitions that you dealt with? Like, what was, you know, what were some of the differences in, in the job that you had to do? Yeah, I think, um, starting to earn trust at a different level, um, you know, as a principal, you're gaining the trust of your, um, the teachers that you work with by providing them feedback and, and building them up to be the, the best they can be. But then when you take that next step, um, like now principals are under you. And so building up that trust that, um, I am credible, I am capable, um, and you, and you don't just do that through words, it's through actions. So, you know, being not afraid to step in and say, let's do this together or, or getting feedback, like, um, you know, are my blinders on here with what I'm seeing? I think a lot of it is just getting uh, just that different level of trust. And, um, you know, I still, even at that assistant superintendent role, got into classrooms, but there were 18, 19 buildings in that district. And so it wasn't every classroom every week like it is here in this district, which is a lot more manageable and small. So um, so, so just to have structure my time so I could be present and mindful for those folks who really needed me to be a leader for them. And that was just a switch. It was just a different level. Yeah. And that like the, I, there is a, there's a power in that visibility, right? Like be, yes. and maybe, I don't know if visibility is the right term or being present. 
Um, I, I went from a school district that I never, so I was a teacher here and I was there for five years. I never met the superintendent. I never met any of the assistant superintendents. And now I don't know if it's a, to be fair, but the reality of it is it was a large, it, it was a large huge. geographical sure. district. It wasn't yeah. a huge population, but it was spread out. Right. Um, and then, and then I went to a new district and I met the superintendent the very first day. And it was like a very different experience. Right. And not yeah. like I saw the superintendent on a stage. Like I actually met the superintendent, met the assistant superintendents and it was a very different feeling. Right. And that, mm -hmm. that was something that really, really mattered to me. Cause I remember like having a conversation and when you, when you don't, like, I think a lot of times superintendents are put on pedestals because they're like, kind of like the wizard of Oz hiding behind a curtain. You don't really ever see them. <laughs> and there's that. Whereas I felt like I was, you know, it was part, of, it made me feel as a teacher that I was part of, you know, I was part of something larger and I, my success helped the success of the school district. And then I had more yeah. ownership over that. So that, that really mattered to me. And so I, I appreciate you sharing that. Okay. So I know you just, you were just in, um, I think it was in Chicago, right? We we're in Chicago yes. with, with a, yep. uh, with a superintendent event. Um, yep. now I know I'm putting you on the spot. Like what was some, what was like a big takeaway working with all these other superintendents? What's some of the things that, you know, that you learned from that conference, from that event that, you know, would benefit people listening to this podcast right now? Yeah. I still think that, um, no, no matter what state you're in, because this was kind of a, a Midwest state, uh, superintendent event that we, we still have this passion and love for kids. And that makes me so happy. And then we also are all dealing with a lot of the same things. So sometimes I get bogged down with, you know, some of the things that are happening in our state that may or may not be the best things in education or for kids, but but I'm not on an island. There are other states and leaders feeling this way. So it was a great way to build a network and and just say, hey, of the things that are that that things that are going very well in your state, how can I implement them in what I'm doing in Atchison, Kansas? I met this lovely female superintendent from Indiana, and I can't remember her name, but I mean, she was experiencing some of the same hiccups we were in terms of some assessment stuff. Right. And so she was sharing some of the things she's doing. And I'm like, I could totally take that back and implement it. And, and I'm not saying like a big change in how we teach. It was just a, a little thing in how she shared some data. And it was, it's just nice to know that we're not on an island in education. Sometimes superintendents, you know, we are a little bit alone. Um, and so the more we can meet and network with other people who are going through the same things, good and bad, the better. And, and this was not a group that was going to wallow in any kind of self-pity that was, this was, how do we continue to move forward, think bigger, um, do better. I love that. And that, that, that is, uh, that to me, cause I, you know, a lot of the, the jobs in administration are very isolating. And I think, um, probably some of the districts and, you know, I don't, I don't know who is represented there. Some of the districts that were there, probably very different geographical makeup, you know, there's a lot of different things. And so what I, I love about what you shared is I know you might take something from that conference that you saw as like effective, but also know you can't just do it the same way another district did, but there's going to be tweaks that are like the Atchison way. Right. And Absolutely. that's something that I really appreciated that, you know, Hey, I, that's a really great idea, but here's things that we need to do differently. Uh, yep. for it. So, um, I, I remember when, and when, when we were, when I was there with you all, uh, really, I could feel your passion, your excitement for your staff, um, mm -hmm. and really your vision for the year ahead. So at the end of this year, the 2023, 2024 school year, what, how does, what look, how, what does success look like to you? Like, what does that look like for your school district and you know, what your students and your staff are able to achieve? That's a great question. Um, gosh, I, I have said, I think this is the best start to the school year in five years. Um, I, I thought my first year was great because I'm new and, ah, and then, but this has been a solid year. So I yeah, feel like the opening could, keynote you had, I think I a hundred percent totally was. Um, I think that if we can end as strong, um, 
just with that same amount of feeling, uh, the culture being strong, um, you know, I can go into a classroom just like I am now and seeing the excitement. If I see that the last week of school, I'm going to know that we have been successful. Um, there's, there's just such, such good, so many good things. And I, I want to sustain that the entire year. Yeah. And that, you know, like that was actually, so I were like, I, I have a really strong memory of like events I go to and different experiences that I have. And I actually, I know that sounds weird. I like legitimately remember where I parked that day, where it was in the school, yeah. how I got into like all of these little things. Um, yeah. I went to actually, there's a Taco Bell in Atchison. I went there. Yes. Taco Bell. Taco <laughs> Bell. That's like my, that's my, that's my healthy road food is getting a protein power bowl. So protein bowl. Yep. Yeah. Power bowl. Yep. So, um, I actually, um, when I was there, one of the things I really recognized and appreciated was how, how you, you could tell there's a lot of your staff grew up there, right? Yes. Like they grew up yes. in Atchison. They've been yeah. there basically as a student. And there was a, there was a warmth of that. There was like a small community feeling, mm -hmm. but there was also a vision to move forward. And I'm not just, yeah. and not just from you. And maybe it started with you. You know, I don't know if that did, but it, that, that isn't always necessarily true. Sometimes mm -hmm. when we teach in the towns, we, that we went to school in, the reason is because we liked it there and we don't want things to change. And change, so yeah. it was really, that was the thing that really stuck out to me about your group was yeah. they, they wanted to, Hey, we want this small town feel. We want to like know everybody, but we also know that we can continuously get better and prepare our kids for all the opportunities that exist. So yeah. that, I'll, I'll credit, you know, that not only to you, but your wonderful team and your staff, cause they were, is is a really great community to be there. So I felt really blessed yeah. to be a part of that. Thanks. Thank you. So, one thing about that is uh, the convocation that you attend is we bring everyone in. So yeah. this was the first year that we've had our own bus. bus I remember drivers. the bus we driver contracted day. that out. So they got to come in and feel a part of our family and Paris and yeah. kitchen, uh, nutrition services and custodians and plant facilities and technology. And um, so, so when you credit that forward thinking, it, it really is all of them um, because we're all in it. I mean, we're all, we're all employed by USD 409 and we all want good things to happen to our kids. So it really is, it really is a credit to everyone who was in that auditorium that day. And that, you know, that, that little point that you made is actually very important. And I wish, I wish I, I shouldn't say more school districts, but all school districts, because I feel sometimes there is a divide that between, you know, and we, I don't know where I was, we call them certificated staff. So teaching staff and non-teaching staff basically. Right. Yeah. And then we're like, why is there such a divide? It's like, oh, because you actually didn't invite your non-teaching staff to the opening day. So that's probably, yeah. probably one of the reasons. So, you know, <laughs> I think that part of it too, is that seeing that every person that you encounter, every person you interact with, um, mm -hmm. you know, in your school district is part of that child success in your school. So I, I yeah. just really appreciate it. And I know, um, you're doing a wonderful job. Your team's doing a wonderful job. So thanks for taking the time. Uh, you yes. know, I thought, it's, I thought, Hey, if she's getting a phone call. If there's going to be knocking, then it's something serious, <laughs> right? So, nothing so serious. There's no, there's no, there no, uh, you know, like you need to open the door right away. So no, uh, thanks everyone serious. for listening. Renee, best of Thank luck you. to the chiefs, unless they play the box and I hope they lose. But other than that, so <laughs> Right. And I'm already a Bears fan. So we, they really lost. It, so that's, <laughs> that's over. But thanks for being on the podcast. Thanks everyone for listening. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.